Hi, welcome to my um, my video on my EDC collection. Um, I have quite a big collection of knives and watches and stuff like that, and I like to rotate them and uh, you know change what kind of EDC knife or whatever I carry on me each day. Um, so I thought I'd just go through. Um, yeah, I have this chest here which I bought about twenty years ago from IKEA, which I've had for a long time and. And it's, um, it's always been good to sort of put knickknacks and stuff like that. So recently I've just organised it, each drawer for different knives and watches and so forth. So, yeah, I've seen a few of these um, videos online and I thought, you know, might as well share mine because I've got some good pleasure from watching other people's videos on their collections as well. So, first of all, we'll start with the top drawer. <clears throat> In this drawer here I keep all my watches. Um, not a huge collection of watches, but some people say I have. Um, you know, I've got the old analog watches, you know, the odd Swatch watch, Tissot, Tissot, um, Sea Star, which I've had for about 15 years. And then I've also got this interesting Swatch watch here, which is a skeletal kind of design, automatic, which I've had for about 13 years ago, 13 years or so. So it's got this sort of, um, this weight at the back, which winds it up automatically. And it's actually quite good at timekeeping. Um, so these two here are probably my favourite analogs. Um, got another automatic there as well, which I don't wear, wear so often. Use this one here if I'm going out um, doing surfing or any kind of water activity in the sea. Um, it's a Rip Curl, which is an Australian brand, but it's probably made in China. Um, basically gives you the tides and the moon phases for when good surf's around and stuff, and you can um, set it to you know what what's you know popular beach for surfing around the world. Um, it's quite useful. Um, used to do a bit of sea kayaking, and it would have been useful then to know when the tides are coming out. Um, then I've got this new here dress watch, which is a Skagen, um, nice thin design. Recently got this about um, Christmas. Um, it's also got a 24-hour face as well, which is useful. Um, my partner, she used to be um, uh, work in the airline industry, and she she prefers the 24-hour clocks. And I'm always confused when I ask her what time it is. So I thought this would be useful because she would say. At 2100 hours or whatever so quite like this got your date wheel at the bottom as well um, very comfortable um, yeah highly recommend and not bad for value as well uh, this is my new favorite um, you might have seen one of my reviews on it it's the new um, the new Casio Pro Trek PRW 3000 which is basically an ABC watch as an altimeter barometer and compass negative face. Um, I quite like it. Some people have found the, the display is quite hard to read. I haven't had any issues with that. The backlight's really bright as you can see in daylight it lights it up nice um, and also turns on automatically when you move your wrist in a certain angle. Um, yeah, highly recommend. Um, solar power and also atomic timekeeping if you're in a country with the atomic um, radio signal. Unfortunately here in New Zealand we don't get that um, but however I hope to do some traveling later this year and go through part of the world where um, that will come in handy. So yeah, just I cycle through those watches, but that's my watch drawer. On to uh, Swiss Army knives. Um, been collecting for a number of years. I've had one or two other knives, but lost unfortunately throughout the years. Um, Yuenga kind of toenail clipper thing. Don't use that too often. It's pretty rubbish actually for clipping nails, but I thought it was quite handy. Got it with some points from a Visa once, so I thought it'd be good in the collection. Then um, moving on through to, um, I think this is a Spartan, someone may correct me, I've had this for a long time. I think um, my father gave me this when I was about 17 and, and engraved my initials on the blade. So it's one of my first knives, got me, got me hooked into the hobby. Then this one here was a special by Ducati, I'm a big motorbike fan. Um, not sure what the knife is, but it's got a torch, pretty useless torch, wouldn't really use it as a torch. But you've got your screw, um, Phillips screwdriver and a few other things. Not going to go in detail on what the knives have got, you know. Um, I do have some reviews on some of the other knives I've got as I go through this. Um, I think this is a Spartan as well, but correct me if I'm wrong as well. I've had this for a... Oh, Camper. It's a Camper. Unfortunately, um, oh, not this one. This one here, I've got a bent um, corkscrew. Um, but this one here is fine. Pretty basic functions. Then this one here I got from um, a friend's father who was Swiss. Um, it, I think it's not the executive, it's, it's, it's a model I haven't seen very often, unfortunately it's got a bit scratched, but it's got this nice little metal kind of motif here, so it's also a Swiss Army knife, um, probably would say it's from the 80s actually, he gave it to me and it was quite old, unfortunately it was in better condition when he gave it to me and I didn't look after it, so I might have to do some polishing, get some wet and dry sandpaper and clean that up a bit. 
Then another Wango. I, I, this was the first one with a, a torch that I really liked. Um, my dad got the um, Victorinox version, and um, well, actually, he got this one, and I, I got the Victorinox, and he preferred the red light that was on the Victorinox at the time, and I preferred the white light on this Wango. Yeah, it's done some good, you know, it was on a key ring, so it's been battered about. Still keep it for sentimental, but don't actually use it that often. Um, I've actually got a silver Alux um, Wenger, which I keep in my key ring, which I don't have here. That's probably my EDC to the max. Got it on my key ring, so it's used every day. Then I've got the Wenger Soldier. Uh, apparently these are hard to come by with this little um, Yenlard, um key ring thing type thing there, um, whatever you call it. Pretty good, very sharp. Cut myself a couple of times accidentally without opening it. Then the old Swiss card, self-explanatory. I usually put that in my wallet. Not in my wallet at the moment, but because um, I've got my little um, silver hallux on my key ring. This is a new tool I just received. Um, my dad's just been over to Switzerland and Geneva and went to the Victorinox, fact, um, Victorinox shop and picked this up. Keen Cyclist, so it's actually made by a company called, I think it's Swiss Tools or something. Um, is it Swiss Tools? Swiss Tools. And um, uh, that's it, they're right in front of us. So they make it, but um, Victorinox have slapped their branding on it. I think they do some of the stuff for, uh, for Victorinox, maybe for the, the Swiss tool, not sure. But I really like the patina, different colour patinas, if you can see, see that on the um, on the different uh, tools there. And these break off and there's tyre levers. Haven't used it yet, but um, hope to soon, but just keeping it in my Victorinox collection at the moment. Then I got this one, which I've done a review before, which is the, the new Swiss Soldier 2008. Um, really good with the one ho one hand opening um, knife blade. Not so keen on the serrated bit. It would have been nice if there was a sharper bit and kept the serrated bit at the bottom. But um, yeah, it's a pretty good knife. Um, I'll put that up there because uh, closing that with one hand might be a bit dangerous while looking through the camera. Then this one here, the Work Champ. Um, really good knife. This is probably one of my favourites. Pretty big and heavy, but um, it's got everything you need and a good, decent pair of scissors as well. So yeah. As you can see, I've got some of this non slip stuff, which I is quite good to put in your drawers just to keep everything, you know, opening and closing, keeps them all in one place. It's pretty good. Oh, um, so, going down further, we get into Leatherman territory. Well, I've only got two Leathermans. Um, I've got a, the old XTI um, Charge, which is not a bad knife, has two drivers uh, places. Um, I've done a review on this in the past as well. Um, yeah, not a bad knife. I've noticed there's a bit of rust lately with the higher density metals. Um, uh, they rust easy, more easily than the softer metals that are in the, the Toronox. Um, but it's a pretty decent tool. I also picked this up, which is your skeletal. Um, this is really good. Um, it's pretty much basic, but very light. Carbon fibers, but gimmicky, doesn't actually give any rate, weight reduction compared to the other model. Little bit tall here. Some people said these fall out. I haven't had any problems with that so far. Um, but yeah, see my review on that as well if you wish. This one was a bit of a toy, little stocking filler I got one Christmas. It's just a little kind of key that's got a knife bits in it and opens up. It's not bad, but the way how it joins onto the key ring is here and it easily opens and falls off. So just have that there just for a bit of show and tell. Then um, got my Phoenix, um, Phoenix uh, PD20 um, flash torch, which is pretty good. Uh, I could blind you all with this, but I don't want to. Um, yep, as you can see, it's very bright. And you have lots of different settings. Um, takes those really tiny CR type batteries. Don't know what they're called, but they're pretty hard to come by. I was looking at a, a rechargeable charging kit version, but I've had this for about a year and the battery hasn't gone flat yet and use it quite often. Um, then, a, you know, a series of cases and stuff for all the knives and um, Levermans, which I don't use because I like the belt clips on these things. Um, often carry these too. Here's my EDC rather than the Swiss Army knives. Apart from the silver alux, I've got on the key ring. Um, just that um, having pliers and, and stuff like that is really handy. But I do like the Victorinox. I sort of, you know, when you've got too many tools, it's hard to decide what you need for what job half the time. Then this drawer here is just a Geneva Audio little um, radio type thing, Bluetooth or AirPlay or whatever you want to call it. And then some cufflinks. Um, I used to own a Vespa scooter for a number of years, so a big fan. Kept the key from the thing for memorabilia and got some Vespa cufflinks. Old wallet, compass, handy for calibrating the old uh, ABC watch, which is in this drawer. Um, and obviously in New Zealand, I've got Panumu, which is a um, jade necklace, which I was given once. Um, some traditional kind of um, um, indigenous artwork from New Zealand. 
Uh, then we move on to, oh, this is the family jewels or family chest. Just got some knickknacks in here that I've inherited from my grandfather and I have a huge family tree here and so forth. Um, so I keep any of those details there and stuff. Then down here is the old old school technology, the old Game Boy from... Um, I originally had the first Game Boy that came out in 89, but um, got some dead pixels. So in about 97, I was doing a bit of a trip around the world, so I bought that for the plane trip and so forth. The old Matrix phone. Um, not quite the, the model, but this was the model after one that was using the Matrix, which has an awesome kind of flick um, thing. I tried to get this working recently, but unfortunately... Um, I uh, couldn't get it going, but um, I kind of like the old school. I use an iPhone every day, but however, um, it's quite fun to have a good backup phone. I use this phone quite a lot. Um, um, here in Christchurch, we've had a series of earthquakes, you may have heard, and had lots of uh, power outages. Uh, there's one time where power was out for a week or two, and um, this, this phone would have come in handy then. It's pretty much got 38... Um, days battery life. It's got a flat uh, a, a torch here and a radio. So I keep this handy, um, really good. Um, I prefer the iPhone obviously with the technology but at the end of the day an iPhone only lasts about you know a day on one full charge. This thing lasts for weeks. Um, obviously no internet and stuff but you know with the radio you get the news. So um, has you know may come in handy. Um, yeah, so, I mean, obviously, maybe some preppers watching this. Um, yeah, Christchurch had a, the series of earthquakes, and um, we had no water and no surge and all sorts of things for a long time. So kind of, um, you know, use the, uh, our skills uh, for real use. Um, you know, a lot of preppers never get the opportunity to, um, well, fortunately, um, you know, have situations where they have to use stuff. Apparently, um, there was a story, one of the buildings that came down, um, a chap um, had to have his leg amputated and one of the workmen who was working quite close had a Leatherman and, and um, used that to, un well, unfortunately, cut his limb off, but um, fortunately because the building was dangerous and they needed to get him out of their ASAP. Um, I believe that story is on the Leatherman website now. Um, yeah, so hopefully that doesn't have, hasn't happened to me. Um, but anyway, thanks for watching um, this video and, you know, feel free to... Um, leave any comments and subscribe. Um, I hope to keep putting more videos up in the future um, yeah, of this sort. Okay, thanks very much. Bye.